Good evening. My name is Carol Cottrell, and I'm the Executive Director for Lavac Literacy New Brunswick. And I want to thank you for joining our Spain excursion, brought to you tonight by our sponsor, Northland Design Studio, Inc. Spain is so rich in history, I decided to narrow it down tonight to one area, Tarragona, along the Costa Dorado. But first, I'm going to take a few moments to tell you about Lavac Literacy New Brunswick. Lavac Literacy is an adult literacy nonprofit. We have affiliated councils in St. George, St. John, Fredericton, North Carlton, Moncton, Miramichi, and Bathurst. We help adults ages 16 to 106 improve their literacy and essential skills. We particularly focus on helping people improve their reading, writing, and math skills. We can help people get ready to take a GED course or read to their grandchildren. We work one-on-one -on -one with each learner to identify their goal and help them reach it. If we don't have a council in their area, we can also help through a new digital learning program that runs on either a smartphone, a tablet, or on a computer. If you or someone you know is struggling with their literacy, we are always here and ready to help, so please pass our information on to them. On to tonight's program. The Spain Excursion is the second in a series of virtual excursions we are offering in conjunction with our Tour the Mediterranean virtual gala event, which will be held on November 19th. Tickets for that event are still available and include a meal kit that you either pick up or can have delivered to you in the Moncton area. It includes everything you need for a five course meal featuring tastes from Spain, Greece, France, Morocco, and Italy. In these excursions, we are trying to give you a little taste of each of these countries. As if you were on a cruise ship and had just docked along the coast, this is your excursion. Go back in time to a place of adventure and conquest through the astonishing sights of Roman architecture, medieval buildings and ancient aqueducts in a city that was once the capital of the Roman Empire, Tarragona. This beautiful seaside city is part of an area known as Catalonia. It is a favorite getaway for those looking to escape the hustle and bustle of Barcelona. The area welcomes travelers from all over the world to admire its breathtaking Roman ruins, stunning Mediterranean beaches, and charming alleyways adorned with colorful orange trees. From a romantic retreat to a family-friendly day out, Tarragona, or Taraco, as the Romans called it, offers something for everyone to enjoy. I was going to start this history of Tarragona with the Neolithic Age, or the New Stone Age, but if I did so, I know we'd never get finished tonight. So I'm going to focus on Tarragona's Roman history and the legacy of Caesar Augustus. It is believed that Julius Caesar visited Taraco at least once in 45 BC, at that time, he granted it the designation of a colony. In the first century BC, Taraco became the capital of Terraconensis, the northern region of Hispania. It is believed to be the oldest Roman settlement in Spain. In 27 BC, Julius Caesar's adopted son and heir, Emperor Augustus Caesar, moved to Taraco, and both the city and port quickly began to flourish. Soon after his arrival, the name of the longest and most important road in Hispania was changed to Via Augusta. Never before had a sovereign decided to live beyond the walls of the empire's capital city. From here, Augustus oversaw operations against the Catadrians and the Asturians and issued a series of dictates that set the new format for the government of the Roman world. For two years, Taraco was, in practice, the capital of the Roman Empire. Taraco was called on to be Roman's great capital in the Western Mediterranean, and although the majority of its grand building complexes date from the subsequent Julio-Claudian dynasty, there can be no doubt that they were planned during the time of Augustus. It was he who was responsible for Taraco being considered the most opulent town on this part of the coast, to quote Pomponius Mila, in the time of the Emperor Claudius. This is a model of what the city would have looked like at the height of the Roman Empire. The legacy of Caesar Augustus is still very present in the city. Seen here is an altar with an inscription dedicated to the Numen or divine power of the Augustus. 
It would have been used in ritual ceremonies held before theatrical performances and can be found now at the Museum National in Tarragona. Augustus died in 14 AD after ruling the Roman Empire for nearly 40 years. He was soon declared divine and a temple in his memory and honor was erected in the center of the top level of the provincial forum the following year. Today, the stately Cathedral of Tarragona sits on the same site where once the Roman temple dedicated to Emperor Augustus stood. Recent excavations have discovered the very foundations of that temple buried deep beneath the cathedral floor. This remarkable Roman history is seen all over the city of Tarragona and one of the reasons I chose it as our stop for this excursion. Recently given the UNESCO World Heritage Site status, Tarragona's Roman ruins are great for sightseeing and are some of the best conserved ancient buildings in all of Europe. Walking is the best way to take in these Tarragona attractions, as all of the ancient Roman sites are within a 15 minute walk from each other. Start by making your way down the city's main street, the Rambla Nova, where you can see the Foro della Colonia, the provincial forum, here on your right hand side. The colonial forum, located in the residential part of the city, was where marketplaces and shops were located, surrounded by temples and public buildings. All main streets led here, making it an important meeting point, a place to be seen, as well as a religious and social center. Let's watch this short video, which shows what it would have looked like then. It is in Spanish, which I don't speak, but offers a great recreation of what it would have looked like in Roman times. I'm sure you'll be able to follow along. En este muro original romano tenemos una decoración con pilastras. Y aquí abajo un indicio de dónde se situaba realmente el nivel de los cimientos. Uniendo esta información con la que arrojan otros hallazgos y por el conocimiento que tenemos de las ciudades de otras partes del imperio, podemos reconstruir el elemento arquitectónico al que pertenece, la plaza de representación y de administración de la provincia. Se trataba de una plaza increíblemente grande. Es la segunda más grande de todo el Imperio Romano. Medía 265 metros de largo y 145 de ancho. Las construcciones perimetrales acogían los equipamientos propios de la administración provincial: archivos, tesorería, aulas de reunión. El interior de la plaza estaría seguramente adornado de jardines, fuentes, inscripciones honoríficas y numerosas estatuas. I may not understand Spanish, but I can still appreciate the grandness of what must have been the colonial forum. The Colonial Forum was built in approximately 30 BC, and the columns of the Basilica, seen here, are probably the best examples of just the handful of ruins still remaining at this location. Once you are done at the Forum, make sure you stop at the end of the Rambla Nova, where you will be treated to gorgeous views of the Mediterranean Sea from the famed Balcon de Mediterraneo, the Mediterranean balcony. Rising 40 meters above the sea, this airy balcony offers a splendid view of the Mediterranean, the Tarragona Port, Miracle Beach, and the ancient Roman amphitheater. A place beloved by Tarragona natives, legend has it that touching its singular ra railing seen here, the Tocar Ferro, can bring you good luck. From here, you don't have to go very far to find the ruins of the second century AD Roman amphitheater, where audiences of up to 15,000 people would cram together to take in some of Rome's infamous gladiator fights. Looking at this modern recreation, you can imagine what a spectacle this must have been. After Christianity became the official religion of the empire, the amphitheater lost its original function. 
The Islamic invasion of Spain started a period of abandonment of the area, which lasted until the 12th century. The site served a number of purposes, including a church, a convent, and then a prison before being abandoned. It wasn't until the mid 20th century that archeological excavations were begun to recover the amphitheater. Another testament to the city's long history is the massive ruined walls that encircle the old town. Their lowest course is Cyclopean, consisting of unhewn blocks of about 12 feet long and six feet wide, which predate the Romans. Roman masonry of the Augustan age is superimposed. The six gates and the square towers are to the great extent Cyclopean as well. These are truly megalithic structures. You can see that these massive walls were meant to be strong fortifications to keep out the most determined invaders. If you are looking for a feat of Roman engineering, then we must visit the Devil's Bridge, also known as the Aqueduct de Ferreras. Another World UNESCO Heritage Site, this 2000 year old aqueduct was built during the reign of Emperor Augustus from 27 BC to 14 AD to supply the city of Taraco with fresh water from the nearby river. Ancient Roman architects built two aqueducts in Taraco at that time, which provided the whole city with clean water. The first aqueduct was filled from the Francoli River and the second from the Gaia River. I will include a link on the event page where you can read more about this marvel of engineering because I won't be able to do it justice. What I can tell you is that this 249 meter long aqueduct continued to bring water to Tarragona until as recently as the 18th century. There are several legends surrounding the construction of the aqueduct and how it got its diabolical name. They're basically versions of the same parable with a few minor changes. Many years ago, there was an elderly couple who lived in the forest near Tarragona. Each day they loaded their donkey with products to sell at the market in a nearby village. The road to the village crossed an old wooden bridge over a very deep river. Unfortunately, one day there was a bad storm and the floodwaters washed out the bridge. The next day when the couple found that they couldn't cross the river, the old man said, what a disaster. We can't get to market. I'm too old to build a new bridge. The couple were still discussing their misfortune when a strange looking man appeared out of nowhere. When the man, old man explained what had happened, the stranger said, don't worry. Tonight, I'll build you a new bridge and I'll make it out of stone to ensure it can't be washed away. What shall we do, said the old man to his wife. The only way he could possibly build the bridge in one night is using some kind of magic. When the old man asked what the bridge would cost and under what conditions, the mysterious stranger replied, I'll build the bridge for free in return for the soul of the first to cross the bridge. At this point, it became clear to them that the mysterious stranger was in fact the devil. The old one thought for a moment before accepting the devil's offer. The next morning, when the elderly couple arrived at the river, they found a large stone bridge and the devil awaiting his payment. What should we do now, dear? The old man asked his wife. The old woman turned and slapped the donkey's hindquarters so that it was the first to cross the bridge. What well, just goes to show you should never underestimate a woman's cleverness or ability to get a bargain. From the bridge, let's travel back to the Cathedral Basilica of Tarragona. The edifice is located in a site previously occupied by a Roman temple dating to the time of Tiberius, a Visigothic cathedral and a Moorish mosque. It was declared a national monument in 1905. There is little information about the origins of the church. According to historical chronicles, the cathedral was founded in 1175 on the ruin of these earlier churches. It was consecrated on July 4th, 1331. That is more than 150 years of construction, during which time the plan for it changed numerous times. I could do a presentation on the cathedral itself, so I'll only point out a few things in this presentation. For instance, the central facade of the cathedral has three portals, according to the number of naves, a central Gothic, a side Romance, the main portal of the cathedral with steep 
pointed arches, which look very imposing. The center is decorated with a pillar with a statue of the Virgin Mary. On either side of the buttresses are statues of the apostles and prophets. And over the gateway is a bas relief depicting the last judgment. Above the main gate is a large rose window. The 12 spokes represent the 12 tribes of Israel or the 12 apostles. It has a diameter of 11 meters. The other side entrances or portals have also a smaller rose window. The Gothic bell tower with a height of almost 70 meters has the shape of an octag octagonal prism with a large elongated stained glass window and a small upper turret. Inside, the altar was created by order of Archbishop Asperec de Barca. It is made of white marble with a magnificent carved frontal dating from around 1220. And it's considered one of the finest known examples of Catalan Romanesque sculpture. It depicts six scenes from the life and martyrdom of Saint Tecla arranged around a, center, a central mandorla representing the Holy Trinity. Saint Tecla is the patron saint of Tarragona. On the side wall to the right of the chancel is a segmented arcosolium with an ornate polylobed decoration and crockets on the reverse. It contains the mausoleum of the Archbishop and Patriarch of Alexandria, John of Aragon, who consecrated the cathedral in 1331. You could spend a day just looking around the cathedral and to me it would be worth it. There will be a link on the event page to the church's website where you can read more about the many architectural and artistic features of this grand structure. But what if history is not your thing? This presentation was on Tarragona's history, but you sure, would you still uh, need to go to Tarragona if you don't want to look at the history? <laughs> well, only if you're looking for great food, shopping, beaches, and entertainment. If you are looking to walk on the beach, there's more than 50 kilometers of coast. That Costa Dorado or Golden Coast with long sandy beaches, secluded coves, and crystalline waters. The beaches of Tarragona are known for their excellent quality and the climate allows holiday makers to go for a pleasant swim from June through September, but sunbathing and walking on the beach are possible all year round. The beaches and coves of the Costa Dorada have a long gradual slopes. Consequently, wading and swimming poses no risk. Simply take basic precautions such as checking the weather forecast beforehand. One of the most popular beaches is El Miracle. It can be seen from the balcony. Your comfort at the beach is further ensured by a wide array of services ranging from maintenance teams to regular water and sand analyses, to restaurants, to hammocks, to sport recruitment rentals. Another popular beach is La Rabasada Beach, which has great facilities like washrooms and showers, but also a wide selection of beach bars and restaurants. It also offers disabled access and facilities for travelers of all abilities. If you are traveling with children or are a big kid yourself, you may want to try out one of the many area aqua and amusement parks, such as the Aqua Leon, the Aquapolis, or Porta Aventura. Suffice to say, whether you are looking for history or adventure, you will find it in Tarragona. That concludes tonight's excursion to Tarragona. I am around and encourage you to include any questions you may have in the chat, and I will do my very best to answer them. I will tell you now, I have not had the chance to go to Tarragona, but once this pandemic is ended, I sure do want to get there. While you do that, I'm going to thank our sponsors. TD Bank, who is our title sponsor for the Tour of the Mediterranean. McGinnis Cooper, who is the Morocco level sponsor and is the host for our Morocco excursion on November 16th. The Chartered Professional Accounts of New Brunswick, who have sponsored the beverages for the gala event. Horizon Health Network, who is the host of our France excursion on November 12th. Northland Design Studio Inc., who sponsored tonight's excursion to Tarragona. BAD Strategic Planning, who hosted the excursion to Italy. 
And last but not least, our culinary partner who will be preparing the meal kits for our tour of the Mediterranean on the 19th. I will be posting numerous links on our event page for Spain, and I encourage you to take a look at them and explore them at your leisure. Now I'm here to answer any questions you may have.